Did you ever think of becoming president someday? If you do, you'll be in charge of our government's executive branch. So, if you're dreaming of that big, comfortable chair in the Oval Office, that's what the president's private office in the White House is called, how will you get there? First, you'll have to get elected. Every four years, our country holds an election to choose a new president. During that election, millions of people will vote for you and the person that you've chosen to be your vice president. Some people will also vote for your opponent, but we all know they'll be making a big mistake. When you win, you'll get to be president for a four-year term. After that, if you still like the job, you can run again to be president for another four years. After that, if you still like the job and still want to be president, too bad. Nobody can be president for more than eight years. After the election, when your name is splashed across all the newspaper headlines and everyone on TV is talking about what a great president you are, what then? Now that you're president, what will you actually be doing as head of the executive branch? For one thing, you'll be the commander-in-chief. That means you're in charge of the National Armed Forces. That means you're in charge of the Army, the Navy, the Marines, the Air Force, and the Coast Guard. The entire military. Being commander-in-chief is a huge responsibility. Only Congress can actually declare war, but as president, you might have to send troops into harm's way to perform other military actions. Sound like a lot of work? Well, you're in luck. No president does everything alone. All presidents keep a bunch of people around to offer them suggestions and help. These people are called advisors. Even better, as president, you get to choose who your advisors will be. Your special group of advisors will be called your cabinet. No, not the kind you store dishes in. Each member of your cabinet will usually be called a secretary and will be in charge of one department of government. For example, you might have a secretary of education, a secretary of labor, a secretary of energy. You get the idea. Your secretary of education will be in charge of the department of education. The secretary of education will help you, as president, figure out how laws about education will work. Within the department of education, there are tons of employees who actually do all the day-to-day -day work to carry out the education laws. What if being President of the United States sounds like too big a job, but you still think that being in charge of an executive branch sounds like a lot of fun? Well, don't despair, because sometime soon there will be an executive position open in your very own state. Governor. State governments are a lot like the federal government, except in miniature. That means a governor's job is a lot like the president's job. As governor, you'll be in charge of your state's executive branch. Instead of carrying out the laws of the United States, you'll be in charge of the laws of your own state. You'll still get to have a cabinet and advisors, and you'll still have a department to carry out all the work. The main difference is that as governor, everything you do will apply to only your state. Just remember, you may be president or governor, but you're not a king or queen. Presidents and governors do have to interact with the other two branches of government. Darn.